this is quite a strange picture to begin uh, uh, a lecture about energy, but it is a, a lecture about science too. And uh, this is me. This is a friend of mine. This friend of mine is an astronomer. And uh, he has a slightly disagreeable habit of trying to persuade me to get up in the wee small hours of the morning when I could be nice and warm in my bed and go out and look at things in the sky. Luckily, the things he has me go and look at in the sky tend to be rather beautiful, which is why we're still friends. Does anyone know what we're looking at? Hey, okay, yeah? Star. It's a star, is it a star? Does anyone else know? What do you think? A it's a planet, it is actually a planet. You can't really tell from this, except that there are no other stars really visible and it's very, very bright. If you were seeing it in the night sky, it wouldn't twinkle and that's how you'd know it's a planet. Any guesses as to which planet? Uh, right up at the back there. Venus. It is Venus, that is the planet Venus. And that's why I wanted to show you this here, because the planet Venus is quite an interesting one when it comes to the topic of our talk, energy. So this is obviously not the planet Venus. This is a planet. <laughs> this is a planet Earth. This is our home planet. This is the planet Venus. Can you see any differences between the two of them? Yeah? Yes, OK, here? Yeah? One is slightly smaller than the other, but they're very similar size, actually. Oh, yeah, what about, what can you see? The Earth has water and Venus doesn't have water. That's exactly right. What else up there? Red. It's red. <laughs> Very well put. And you know what? Sometimes being a scientist is about saying the thing that seems very obvious but that other people haven't particularly noticed. It doesn't have water and it is red. And the reason it doesn't have water and the reason it is so red is that it's very, very hot. So the surface of the Earth on average is about 15 degrees Celsius. The surface of Venus on average is 450 degrees Celsius. It's hot enough to melt lead if you put it on the surface of Venus. Now, I told you that because, apart from the fact that I like cool things in the sky and I like planets and stars, also because there's a very, very important difference between the Earth and Venus. So they're actually a similar distance from the Sun. Venus is a little bit closer, the Earth's a bit further away, but they're not too distant, different in their distance from the Sun. Also, they're a very similar size. And yet Venus is 450 degrees and the Earth is 15. And if the Earth were like Venus, we couldn't live there. Nobody could live there. There could be no life at all. And the difference between the two, does anyone even know why there's that difference between the two? This is a hard question now. Right up at the back there. Uh, th there is actually an atmosphere on Venus. It's almost the opposite reason, actually. What, what do you think? There's, no life on Venus. There's definitely no life on Venus, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah? <coughs> Too much gravity? Not really, because the gravity comes from the size of the planet, and they're a very similar size. Sh shall I tell you? I'll tell you what the difference is. Venus has a very thick atmosphere, actually. It's got something in the atmosphere that makes all the difference in the world. And that something is it's got a lot of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas that warms things up. We're going to come back to that in a moment. But Venus has a lot of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and that means it turns into this incredibly hot hell place where it rains sulfuric acid, where the atmosphere is incredibly dense, where the temperature is so hot you almost can't imagine it, and where there can be no life at all. So that's the difference between the Earth and Venus huge, huge amounts of carbon dioxide. So we're going to come back to that thing, carbon dioxide, because that's actually the key to a lot of the, the problems that we're facing at the moment, but also some of the exciting challenges that I hope some of you might take up to be energy leaders in the future. <laughs>